Soul is Dead, Brotherhood, Chapter 6, The Wayfarer The train roared down the tracks. We zigzagged through many different states, trying to avoid major metropolitan areas. Occasionally the train would slow down so that men could switch the tracks over. Sometimes we'd leave the door open to the pitch we had set up for us. I'd sit like a hobo with my legs dangling outside the rail car looking out in the scenery. A guy could fall in love doing something like this. I couldn't really stand the lonely part of being a conductor, but I could see why people sing songs about the country like this. It truly is beautiful. The misty mountains, scrolling through parts of northern Kentucky, crossing bridges. It was definitely something you could get used to, and it took the mind off of the turmoil that was happening in the real world. We were always within shooting distance of the road at times. I can't say always. Sometimes we'd zigzag through parts of the mountains and parts of plains and just forested areas. On occasion when we were looking out the car we would see tents and small campsites set up, cars ravaged, things scattered all about, the dead or what were people alive, tangled in tent wreckage, blood everywhere. Some would shamble towards us, but our moving juggernaut could not be stopped. It sure was beautiful. I felt so safe, and I know I'm dating myself, but it was a great idea. We'd seen no kind of anything on the rails. It was a surprise. It was really good. It was good not to be worried about the dead getting at us or even worse people coming after us. The train was fairly quiet, and when we didn't have the horn blowing, we didn't have to alert anybody of our presence. As a matter of fact, Trevor completely disengaged it completely. We didn't want to run into any situation where someone would accidentally blare it and alert all of God's green earth that we were coming down the rails. Night times were especially peaceful. It was crazy. Everything was just so at ease. The wind would blow through the trees along the train tracks. You could see the grasses growing along the sides. It was cool. You'd throw a blanket on, you'd be absolutely comfortable. Now I can see why a lot of the hobos would do it. What a life it would be. An awesome life peaceful one at that. Not a worry in the world. Even when the dead would show up on the tracks, we'd just plow right through them. We wouldn't even feel it. It would literally just be like someone passing through air. Didn't affect the track any, and we just kept moving forward. The days passed, and they began to bleed together. We began to be a little spoiled of what was going on around the world. Definitely something that somebody like me couldn't be accustomed to anymore. On the third night, we were woken in our sleep. Trevor had came along the catwalk on the side of the engine, back towards us. He hollered back, we're almost to Kansas City according to the GPS inside the engine. I just thought I should come back and tell you guys. Keep quiet. We're gonna shut off the, the lights on here and we're gonna coast on in quiet like. If y'all Make any noise, it could alert anybody to our situation. Trains are a little loud. We don't want to run any kind of risk. The men called back, okay, okay, we understand. Keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Keep those guns up. We're heading toward a train depot uh, on the Kansas side, okay? Uh, when we hitch up, we're getting moving south, we're going to have to stop for a little bit. Stay near the car. We don't know who's watching there. I've worked there before. I've run trucks there. There's a lot of gang problems. Biters aren't going to be the only thing we need to worry about, he called back. We all nodded. One of the soldiers stood up. The sergeant. All right. You guys know the deal. We need to keep quiet. If you do need to get out, bathroom break. Stay close to the car. Okay? Keep your heads down. We're going to be exposed there for a little while. That rail yard's probably quite large. Kansas City's a pretty big city. 
we don't want to run any risks of getting shot at. God knows what's going on there, we don't know. But we do need to be cautious, understand? We all agreed. Understand, he said one more time. Okay, okay, everybody said. Trevor came back a few minutes later. Alright, we're almost there, he called out. Alright, you know the plan. Shush, he called out to us. They shut off the lights and began to coast in. The train began to slow down as we finally reached our destination, the rail yard. The train stopped and they set it on a very low idle. We gotta be her we gotta be quick. I sat there. Son, Danny, I want you to come with me. Uh you soldiers, uh sergeant, take your men. Once you guys set a perimeter, look around in this general area, no more than a hundred yards in all directions. Once you guys set up, look for some stuff. If you can't run into any, any trouble, you head back here as quietly, as quickly as possible. Danny, Martha, come with me. We're going to go over to that junction house over there. See that one right over there? He pointed. It was a junction house. It probably had maps and setups. It's probably where the main conductor of the area moved people around. We're going to get some maps. We're just going to be sure. We're going to get a schematic of where we need to head, what rails we need to be on. Let's hurry up. Trevor grabbed his rifle, my dad grabbed his handgun, and they loaded it up. We need to hurry. Son, stay low. Why am I coming with you? He stopped for a minute and looked around. We just want to be safe. The families over there are going to take care of the train. Let's just be careful. We got inside. We set up a lantern, and Trevor pulled out a small flashlight. Okay, okay, he said as his teeth were grit holding in the flashlight we need to move this way at, uh, t towards Lawrence maybe no that's a big town my dad said hey there's a there's a small uh, a small town there maybe we can get some supplies or maybe get shot by Hicks my dad said my mom looked at it well, it's in the it's in between what's what's it called uh, Perry it's it's near a lake maybe we can get water no, no, look, 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 my dad said, pointing at the map. The lake's too far off from the rails. We'll, we'll pass through it. Well, well, God forbid, let's just head through there. That's one of the quickest ways. We cut through Lawrence, head down through Perry, and then head directly south. That's what we need to do, towards Wichita. That's what you said. Maybe people will have information. And what if they don't? We'll plow through the damn town. They park a car, worst they can do, we'll just blast light through it. Are you sure? Yeah, sure, sure. We'll, we'll get right through there. It takes some doing to stop that train anyway. We got plenty of fuel. We can go back to Wichita and back at least twice. Fine. Look around for anything else. Uh, my mom was looking around inside the drawers. I found a couple lighters. Good, we could use those. Anything else? We're going to take these maps and schematics. Come on. We quietly snuck our way back to the, the train after we turned off all of our lights. One of the men raised his gun. We could hear it cock. Who's there? It's us, you idiot. Hey, you told me to watch the train, one of the men said. All right, how's everything? I, I haven't heard anything. It's been pretty quiet. There's been some gunshots in the horizon, though. A little unsettling. There's a lot of folks here. We need to get going. How's the train? Is it still going? Of course, you listen. The train was in a very low hum. Okay, okay. How's everybody doing? Have the soldiers made it back? Not quite. I... I haven't heard anything. I'm sure they're getting stuff, though. All right. Uh, well, just get into the back of the train, my father said to the man. Load everybody back up, Martha. Make sure they get back in there. Dan, you, you come up front with us, okay? You sure, Dan? Yeah, sure, I will. You're still a kid. It's a train. Um, okay, I said. Come on. I climbed up inside the engine and set the lantern on the top. The electrical lights were still running because of the diesel engine, so we really didn't have to worry about lighting the room. We turned on the small area lamp and then shrouded the windows. We don't want anybody seeing that there are lights on over here, understand, son? Keep down, keep low. We were, all, we were squatting on the floor. We didn't want people to shoot us from the glass surrounding the cab. They put the map on the floor and rolled it out and set some heavy stuff on top of it. Here's where we need to go. 
Yeah, I agree, my dad said. He pointed towards Perry. There's a cross switch. We'll just head down south. We'll get out of the way. This is one of the safer ones. We don't want to head towards Western Cays. There's just nothing out there. We couldn't survive. <sighs> Fine. Let's just do it. All of a sudden, we heard a lot of gunshots. Rhythmic rat-a-tats. Guns firing in several areas. We could hear the families in the back screaming, What's going on? One of the men ran up. We could hear him knocking on the window with his hand. We pulled the glass back. What's going on out there? The guns became more rhythm rhythmic. Rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. We could hear, even hear the bolts bouncing off the engine itself. Large metal dings were going off. What's going on? One of the men was holding a hand over his head, ducking down, trying to say, that Something happened! The soldiers are they're engaging somebody! We can't see that far out! It's too dark! Ah! <sighs> Uh, fine, fine. Uh, get get the people in the trailer. Um, Dan, stay here. Uh, Trevor, stay in the train. I'm coming with you, man. We don't want to, we don't want you going out there. Look, Trevor, they need you more. Dad, don't go. Son, stay here. Trevor said, "Don't worry, I'll watch him." My dad pulled out his handgun. He stepped out the front door. What's going on? I could hear him say as the window was open. I kept my ear close to it. I could hear people yelling. There's some bunches trying to attack us! It was one of the soldiers' voices. We got shot! Is it our gang members? I don't know! We can't really tell! It's too dark! I could see fire from the tips of the barrels coming out. People firing on us. We need to be careful! What's happening? One of the kids got hit! He's dead! Another woman got shot. She's bleeding really bad. Load them into the dang thing. Come on. I could hear my dad holler. One of the men came up behind my dad. I screamed out the window. Dad, look out. He turned around and put his elbow into the man's face. He hit against the side of the engine. My dad put the gun to the back of his head and shot. The top of this piece of his skull came off, splattering against the glass and some of it even getting and misting us inside the window. Oh my god, I said as I fell to the ground. Boy, stay down! Trevor poked his shotgun through the wall, the window. Shot a man coming up. Got that son of a gun. Alright, Dan, see that little throttle piece over there? I want you to slowly push it forward. One click, one Mississippi. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, sure, I said as I crawled over there, wiping blood off of my face. I could hear the men firing. Just go! Just go! How many of you are left? I could hear my dad yelling over the sound of the engine roaring up. I, there's only two of us left. We'll hold them off. Are you sure? You get that son bitch rolling and get it out of here, I heard one of the soldiers yell. Thank you. The two men crawled through the front door. The engine was starting to go. Are you sure? Uh, uh, just just stay here. There's women and children. We've already lost two people. We don't want to lose any more. What about your men? I've lost a couple. This sir, Let us just do our job. The soldier ducked out the, the front door and then continued to go outside. We could hear firing. My dad pushed me aside, blood all over him. Get out of the way, Danny. And stay down! Trevor, how are we looking? Trevor poked the gun outside the window, shooting again. They're coming over. Those soldier boys are dug down next to a couple steel barrels. We'll give them some cover. The firing continued. It was absolute turmoil. I was curled up in a corner, covering my head, screaming. My dad put the throttle down on the, the train. The engine roared. The diesel plumed from the top. We could smell the fumes. The train started to lurch forward, and we started to pick up speed. One of the men tried to get through the front door. My dad placed the handgun through the broken, shot-out glass, shooting the man in the face. He fell to the ground and fell off the train. I hope it, I hope you get run over, you son of a bitch, my dad called. The train lurched forward and the rounds began to get fewer and fewer. Hop on the train, Trevor yelled at. We rolled out. The shots became fewer and fewer, and the only thing I could think about is, what happened, what, is mom okay, is mom okay, I kept asking my dad. My dad said, stay down, as he screamed. You need to stay down. 
We're losing fuel pressure. Hey, hey, James, we're losing fuel pressure, Trevor, he called out. Hey, shut up the tank. How far do you think we can make it? I, I don't know. I don't know. Just, just keep, just keep pushing forward. We need to get out. We need to get the hell out of here. We sped through the countryside on the rails for what felt like hours into the night. My dad was still breathing heavy. Trevor, wiping the blood off his face with a neck neckerchief, he started laughing. <laughs> What's so funny? Boy, it's been a while since I've been in a shootout like that. Dad kind of smiled. Yeah. I was completely confused. I didn't know what was going on. What was funny about that? Alright, now before you get mad, Trevor started to say. We got out alive. Son, he went over to him. You need to relax, my dad said. Trevor started. Listen, boy. You're lucky. Those men stayed behind to protect you. A few of them were dead. And some people got hurt and killed. But you don't want to go around moping around and whining. Make their deaths mean something. Live. I gotta go talk to the folks. Get a damage count. You do that. He opened the front door to the engine and walked out the side. I could see him walking across the catwalk as his silhouette passed it. I sat there tweedling my thumbs. My dad sitting in the driver's seat. It was an awkward silence for quite some time. My dad peering out the front window like a hawk watching for anything. After a few minutes he called. You were brave, Dan. I'm proud of you. Brave for what? As I cleared the tears from my eyes. You were brave for me. Stay down. You listened. I hid. I said. Sometimes you need to hide. Sometimes you need to live one more day so you can help other people tomorrow. You you didn't hide, son. You You followed orders. And I'm proud of you. First time I ever got shot at over in Desert Storm, I, I was a lot less collected than you were, bud. I don't know if it was the video games that desensitized you kids or what, but we began to chuckle. I don't know. Put his hand on my head. I love you, son. I won't let anything happen to you. If God's my witness, I'll do my best. A little bit later, Trevor came back. We lost four people. My dad buried his face in his hands. Who were they? One of the women, two of the kids, and one of the soldiers said the sergeant managed to pull onto the train. A poor kid bled out. What did you do with the bodies? We pushed him off the rails. Jeez. We can't even bury him. That's okay. My dad stood up. We're fine. How's those leaks? A lot of the rounds hit mostly the cab here. Uh, we didn't lose very much fuel. Uh, the tanks were already half empty. I think just some of it splashed out. We're a little lucky. They hit the high parts of the tank, so we're not losing too much. We'll make it there. We drove until dawn and eventually began to cross a, cross a small rusty little bridge. We need to slow down. This is the town. I think this is Perry. Yeah, yeah, this is Perry. As, we begin to, as Trevor woke up my dad, I woke up looking out the window. I could see a pickup truck starting to pull up as our train began to slow to a roll. We stopped behind a pizza place. People came out with guns pointed at us. They were college age, I guess. Young men. Who are you guys with their guns raised up? 
Trevor and my dad walked out first. We got kids here. We got some injured folks. Uh, we, we're just passing through. We're heading down south. South to where? Wichita, he called out. I call BS. Put your hands up. Come on. Open up that rail car over there, Trenton. The big man with the beard walked over towards it, opening it up. All right, everybody, he said. Come on. Come on. One at a time. We don't want any trouble. What's going on here? My dad walked down, holding his hands up. My name's Dr. James Whitman. He showed his badge. This thing's got me out of jail a lot more often than you would care to know. We're just heading down south. We, we believe there's a CDC tent, some kind of encampment to, to help combat this. Uh, the military base, uh, uh, McConnell. The man grabbed it from his hands. He was a huskier guy. Pretty big. Hmm, he said. I've heard about that. I don't know if it's credible or not. You're the first bit of folks we've seen come through here. We had the highway shut down. We blew them up to where people couldn't pass through them. Dynamite, and then we parked some trucks, so you guys are the first bit. Pretty damn ingenious using the rails. It was my boy's idea as I came out from behind him. This is Daniel. He's he's my son. He squats down. So you're the mastermind behind all this? I'm pretty dang impressed. Have you had any of the dead, my dad said. He looked at him, squinted for a moment. Not really. One or two old folks. They they pass away from the stress of the situation, but nothing nothing too bad. It was pretty rough at first, but we figured out you bashed your head in, we don't have to worry about it. Three towns around here have congregated around here. We've made this town pretty dang defensible. We're the first bit of outsiders we've seen in quite some time. About a week. Okay, my dad said. Well, we're heading south. Could you allow us through? Stay here for the night. We'll, we'll patch up best we can for those people. If you're a doctor, we'll give you guys time to get through this. My dad said thank you. As he started to help some people out, he stopped and looked back. What's your name, man? The young guy looked up, placing his rifle on his shoulder. My name's Sam. Nice to meet you. He smiled and felt like things would be okay. <laughs>